Hello, hello, and welcome to tonight's live stream in question time. I hope everyone can hear me okay and things are going well for everyone. Everyone's staying safe and healthy. My name's Ryan and I am live here answering your questions about games run and Unreal Engine 4. Well, about anything you really want. I don't mind answering any questions you may have. And, and this is a weekly live show where, if you've not been here before, is where you get to put in chat any question you like answered, and I'll answer as many as I can, uh, as fully as I can, in the hour or so time that we have this evening. So, hello everyone in chat. I can see everyone popping in now. So, hello Robert, hello Angus, Gitao, hello PCK from Saudi Arabia. Arabia. Hello everyone. I uh, hope everyone's doing okay. Uh, before we begin, a few little uh, housekeeping things. So, uh, the new Puzzle Jigsaw series is now all available for gold patrons on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley. Uh, normal patrons at gold at, at bronze and silver will be getting each episode weekly now. And once they've had all the episodes, then it will start on YouTube as well. So, um, if you want to get that eight weeks ahead of time, head over to patreon.com right now and become a patron. Uh, gold members get straight away along with the whole project files as well uh coming this week as well i've filmed it just need to edit it now is the key binding uh, tutorial so how to do key bindings and how to change key bindings in the mid game that will be shown to you as well uh bro you look tired i am well tired <laughs> i cannot stress how tired i am um working two jobs is obviously having its toll as you can see but hey ho um cool, yeah, i do look tired don't i catch myself in the camera yeah. Oh, rough. Uh, anyway, uh, yes, uh, very little sleep, plenty of work, but nonetheless, we're here, and we're gonna we're gonna do some game design. Um, Hell uh, Thurian. Uh, hey Ryan, how would one save the action bar in the abilities tutorial series? Um, okay, so I can't show it directly, but let's go into a live stream. So, um, with the action bar, uh, you have to remember it's an array, okay? If it's an array, that means it's data, which means that data can be sent over to your abilities bar. So, I haven't got, obviously, the ability system open at the moment, so I can't really do it. But what we've got in mind is that we have a, a bar at the bottom, which is an array of buttons. You need to store an array. So, when you go to save it, you want to go through that array and save the ability that's assigned to each one to that array. Or map, whichever you want to do it, and then that's sent to your save game file, like you do normal saving. Um, I recommend you get familiar with saving and loading first before you try and do something a little bit like this, because it's a bit more complicated. Um, but once you get familiar with that, you should be okay with this, as it is literally just an array of data. Uh, same with inventory; it's an array of data. You just send that array over to the save game file and tell it to save. Um, as I said, it's, I can't easily show it without having to make a whole system here. Um, but yeah. Jose Ramon, uh, hey Ryan, I hope you're okay. I recently heard one of your podcasts. I really like it. I hope to hear the next one. Uh, yeah, I really like doing the podcast and I want to get back to doing it. Um, it's literally a time thing. That's literally all that's stopping me from doing the podcast. Um, but who knows? I'm hoping I can, vent I, I hopefully, uh, if, the, uh, if I still get the support of growth that I'm seeing and, uh, one-to-ones keep coming as they are. I'm hoping that I can make this a full-time gig um, this year, in which case the podcast will return to a weekly format, um, and we can do a bit, lot more stuff as well on top of that. But um, it is literally just time. Uh, once I have more time to do it, I can get more guests in to do it. Um, yeah, it, it's literally a time thing. Um, um, okay, X Draco. Uh, in some games from the start menu for gameplay, there's no transition or simply loading the menu disappears and begins how to do this. So the menu is just a widget. You just hide the widget. In the, so whilst the menu is up, it's loading the game in the background, majority of it anyway. Um, so in those games, like for example, um, we can do it here actually. If we make a widget blueprint and we'll call this one menu. And let's just do this one quickly and make this full screen and set to zero, 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 zero. And we'll make that black. 
and we'll put a little button in there and this button here um, we we'll want to do actually um, I'll put a canvas panel in that and then a button in that canvas panel and go to the center so I'll just make a quick menu so I can show you this 0 0.5 0 0.5 change the size of it here to uh, I don't know, 500 and 100 put some text in it so I know what it does uh, so we go to play game Okay, so let, let, there's your menu, blah, 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 blah. It does all this, okay? Um, when you start the game here, you don't want to possess this player straight away. Uh, or you, you can do, but I recommend not. Uh, so you tell possess disabled. So when I play the game, it doesn't possess it. It, it spawns as well. Let's give the player spawn over here first. Give it that. So when I don't, it just spawns it where it is. Okay, so rather than doing that, we need to take not to do that. So uh, we we'll go to the game mode settings or this thing. Tell it not to do that. So default pawn class set to none. And now, yeah, it doesn't do it. So instead of doing that on your level blueprint or game mode, whichever you want to do, doesn't really matter too much. Um, in fact, let's do it in the game mode. It might make more sense there. On the game mode, begin play. You do something like this, where you create the widget. I know that I can see chat going off in my peripheral vision. I will check in a second. I'm just going to answer this one first. Uh, we're making the menu trans uh, transition smoothly into gameplay. So here's a menu. Uh, we promote to variable, menu. And then we add that to viewport. So at the start of the game, you get that. And then on the menu, um, we need to make this button do something. So this button, what we can do is make it fade out. Uh, you, I said you, you said you wanted something about fading it out. So on this canvas panel here, um, is it here, uh, it, does this affect all of it? Yeah, it does. So on the canvas panel here, we're going to make a new animation. Do fade out. And add the canvas panel to the timeline, which it raises up so you can see it above my head. So there, new track, canvas panel, new track, render opacity. Set keyframe. Set keyframe. And the last keyframe is set down to zero. So it animates like that. On the graph here, um, we do the button unclicked, fade out animation, play animation, like so. Uh, next, we need to tell it what we want to um, just put on the uh, like which character to possess as well. Uh, I'm going to do what I, I envision that you want to try and do and make it the camera pan over to the next camera. Uh, to the player camera so we need a camera that we're starting off in here with so we do a camera and we'll we'll start near the player like that that'd be cool and we're going to tell it to start with this camera in mind so we go to level blueprint add reference on begin play get player controller and set view target with that camera so even though it's set view target with that camera we can't see it because that menu is covering up the screen so if I push play you can't see it okay until I push the button it plays the animation right so once I've done that I want it then to change to a different camera so what I can do here is I can um, Da, 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 da. I need to be able to get a reference to the player character. 
Okay. Um, yes, I know. So on here, we'll do an event dispatcher saying uh, game started. And we'll call that at the end of this. So call game started. Then on the map, on begin play, you're going to get the game mode. Cast to the game mode. As the third person game mode, get the uh, widget, what well, I call it, menu. There you go. And we want to bind event to game started. When we've got that done, we want to then take make the uh, custom event for this. Uh, start transition. Okay. And with that in mind, you then do this that in and then get reference to the player character plug that into your new target here and the target here is player controller get player controller and this one's gonna have a time limit on it so we'll say blend time of say uh, 1.5 seconds uh, so that will blend to the that player character we also then want to take this character and possess it with the, this controller. So possess that pawn there. You may want to put delay in it as well, so it doesn't it waits for you the camera to finish transitioning first. So we'll do one point, uh, do two seconds, so you have a little bit longer delay. So then you get the final effect, which looks like this, and away you go. So the menu widget is just a widget that's shown on the screen. And the way games handle that is that it will do the loading of the game before you start the push the start button. Um, so these games tend to have like long loads before you push play. Um, and then it comes up in the menu and you may have this and you hit the button and it goes and away it goes. Um, yeah, that's about it. Um, it. Does that answer some questions there, Xraco? I know we had to go through it quickly. Maybe I'll make it a full video one day, but um, hopefully that helps some somewhat. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, next up, we got. Uh, Michael Raw, hey Ryan, have you worked with Niagara system at all? Yep, of course. Let me know what you want to know about it. Uh, Tar, I just finished the first game course. What would you recommend as a next step? Um, it depends on where your interests lie, really. Um, I recommend, if you haven't done the challenges at the end of that course, do those challenges. And then think about other things you could add onto it. Maybe you want to add that simple AI that is in that maze with you, possibly. Um... There's other things you could do with that same maze setup and build on top of it. So just build, I would say, add more challenges to yourself and add onto it. So you may want to add AI, you may want to add um, quests to it, you may want to add some inventory stuff to it. Check it out, um, see what you can do with it. Um... Uh, Summer, I'm currently making my first Unreal game and I'm trying to figure out how to have strafing animations But my direction is determined by the mouse Y which makes the blend space really weird any idea how to fix that uh, Okay, so the reason why it's doing that is because so yours is doing Like this, okay, so I'm guessing yours does this uh, like if I push like that it, you, you've got this sort of movement I guess yeah Summer or are you fixing the movement to the rotation of the mouse? Like this. Oh. Or are you doing it like this? So this is what you're doing, yeah? So if you want to have strafing animations, 
So this one doesn't, isn't set up for strafing animations. So let's make. Um, how can I do that? I've got to add some animations to it. Uh, <coughs> let's add this to. By the way, don't forget, um, sessions are my one-to-one -one session slots are available for April still. March is pretty much done. I think there might be some few at the end, but um, April got some slots available. So if you're interested in hiring me for time or to work on a project with you or, or save some work from you, um, work for higher stuff, just email me what you want to know and I can give you prices and things like that. Um, all the information is available on my about page. See you, Angus. Um, right, that should have finished adding those animations to it now. So, I need to switch over this animation star, uh, this animation mannequin across. Um, oosh. Um, so, if I change this mannequin over here to the other one. I'll tell you what we'll do is we'll make a custom animation blueprint so you can see the setup for this. Uh, that one. So I'm going to build an animation blueprint quickly for the animation start pack. It does come with one. I'm going to make a custom one so you can see the whole process. So we'll make a state machine. Uh, we'll call it movement. Now will go into a slot. should always have a slot so you can do montages. And in here, we'll do a new state or a standard movement. And your movement should be a blend space, which I think you said you'd have um, already, which is good. So you do a blend space. Choose a correct mannequin. I want a standard movement blend space. And in here we add our various things. So I've got uh, backwards iron. Uh, let's do uh, jog. Okay, so we've got jog uh, forwards and um, backwards, backwards, um, left, right. So you get this strafe, strafe, and forward, backwards. Idle, yeah. So he stands still. I put idle at the bottom of these ones as well. Like that. Okay, so there's that one. So in the asset details, we change the horizontal axis here to direction, and that goes from minus 180 to 180. Vertical axis go is speed. That goes from 0 to 600, I guess, because that's the speed the character goes. Hit save, and we're done there. On here, we'll drag the blend space out. Right, these two variables. And go to the event graph. On the event graph, we're going to try to get porn owner. It is valid. Whoops. And we then get the character movement. Uh, no. Get. It's only going to be for the player character, so. Oh, no, I should really do it properly. Get velocity. Get. Uh, no, not get. It's just vector length. It gets you your speed. That speed. Ross is like a line. The longer the line is, the faster you go. The direction the line's going is the direction you're moving. So we can also get the actor rotation. And then we work out direction from here. So you can calculate direction. And the direction you're calculating is based on this rotation. 
and that's set to this direction. Done and done. On a third person character, let's switch it to that one. Compile, close, push play. Oh. So now I've got strafing. I just turned off um, the, uh, so I've got movement of mouse. The blend space is handling the strafing animation because they are based on the direction of nine, minus 90 and 90 degrees. So not, zero is going forwards from it, it's local position, rotation. Minus 90 is to the left, minus 90 to the, uh, positive 90 is to the right. So that blend space will blend it between the two. So when I move left, move right, and you got full movement. Okay, and that's based on mouse rotation. And for those who don't know how to make base uh, mouse rotation rather than using the, the stick, uh, stick um, W, S, and D, you turn on use controller rotation yaw. Basically what it means is it's going to take the controller, which is the mouse, and the yaw it's receiving from that. And it knows that you're getting yaw from it because when you turn the mouse, you've, you're doing add controller yaw input. And then you're, you're basically saying wherever the rotation of the controller is at, it's an imaginary controller, Make the pawn match it, and that's what's happening there. <clears throat> and yeah, so that's strafing. Um, I'm gonna get rid of that uh, animation for the menu because that's quite annoying. Uh, in game mode, isn't it? Do that. There you go. Oh, wait, it's because it's... In my, oh, wait, I have to keep it on there. Bollocks. I just have to deal with it. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, Gita, Ryan, have you used any of the advanced locomotion systems? Any thoughts, pros and cons? I have used it. I have no complaints. I think it's fine. That's about it. <laughs> Uh, it makes it a bit difficult when you want to customize part of the animation stuff, but if you're doing standard humanoid advanced movement, that would be perfect. And if you want to get like full Gears of War on this, um, if you're doing like a, a shooter type thing, or like um, Nathan Drake style, just change the offsets on the on the spring arm so do a little bit in the wire there and a little bit in the z and you get more of an over the shoulder look like that So it's more like Gears of War, I guess. Um, uh, in episode 11 of the AI series, there were some steps you did not show us that does not make sense. Uh, I'm sorry, what was episode 11 about? Um, I haven't done that series, well, since my first year of doing this, so. The event graph part of the NPC AI, you did not show us some of the stuff you did. Uh, again, can you p give me more detail but without me having to look up the video? I guess I can try and look up the video. One of the earliest series I've done. Um. Oh, damage sensing. Oh, I'll probably, I could probably do it a bit better now. Um, yeah, I know what you mean. I just didn't know the video content. Uh, it's 20 minutes long. I don't know which part you're referring to. Um, 
do you know which part of the video what thing you're, what are you trying to do with it because again i don't know exactly what your part you're referring to But if you want me to, I can show you how I would do. I would do AI a little bit differently now, based on that series, because um, I've learned a lot more since then. Um, I could show you how I do it now, do damage sensing stuff now. I have to make a whole AI thing, I know. Um, Michael, my next project is going to be pretty particle heavy. I'm wondering how easy or hard it is to use. I've had little experience using Niagara in my last project, but not in not to the level I'm planning in the next project. Um, I mean, yeah. Do you have any ideas of what you want to know about the Niagara system? Have you used any particle system before? Um. Do, do, do. Uh, Daniel Aguilar. Um, hey Ryan, I've been doing NPC Shopkeeper, but I don't want the camera to change immediately, but rather when the player presses the interact button. Right now it only works if it's automatic. So Dan, combine what I did with the shopkeeper stuff with what I did with the door, interactive door uh, stuff. That should do it. Combine the same stuff together. And that's what learning game dev is all about. It's about seeing a solution, or part solution in there and part solution in there and then figuring out how they combine together to create the final solution. And um, that's how I learn. Yeah. Oh, God. Uh, Chase DC 07. Uh, I just mean out of curiosity, how long have you been into Unreal? Uh, about four years. Yeah, Omar, I know which playlist you mean, and I know which video part you mean, part 11, but I don't know which part of that video you want me to explain. I, like, it's 20 minutes long, I, don't, I can't sit here watching it. But I can show you how to do enemy detection damage in here if you want. If, uh, I guess other people might find that interesting too. Um, it'll be a slimmed down version of it, but nonetheless so the usual character AI controller do, do, do. and have your tree Uh, enemy backboard. <clears throat> do, do, do. Um, we'll give him the same animation pack as this one. Like so. change enemy AI controller to that one and save that AI controller run behavior tree done save and on behavior tree um, we can do uh, I won't explain all this because I've explained it a billion times. I'd, I'd much rather get to the juicy part that people want to, what uh, Omar wants to see. Uh, sequence, oh, not sequence, selector. And then we want to make a new task. Uh, 
uh, execute AI, and on execute AI, you get the uh, controlled pawn. Get actor location, and this is just to get to move around randomly. Um, uh, get random point in inevitable radius. New variable here, radius. Float, put that in. Another one for move speed. And that would be controlled pawn, cast to character. Set, uh, no, sorry, get character movement component. Set max walk speed. Move speed there. That's there, that's there. Uh, then we want the blackboard key, target location, and that'll be a blackboard key selector. Editable, editable, editable. Get out, get, and ooh, set value as vector. Once we've got the setup, I can then show you how to do damage dealing to determine what he's doing. Um, finish, execute. Success, save, compile, and rename it. Find random location. And I'm going to set the default radius here to 1000 and the move speed to a default of 400. Compile, uh, and I set it to 600 to be fine. Uh, no, 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 400, 400, 400. Uh, Save, and there. And then back on the behavior enemy tree here, we do find. Random location, blackboard, new key. So I'm going a bit faster to say I want to get to the main bit. Target location, maybe tree, target location there, leave that as it is, and then do move to and choose the target location. Save and done. Drag out nav mesh. Uh, 2000, 2000, oh, that'll do, and 500. Oh, maybe 3000. Okay, there's my mesh. So if I drag him in there now, he should run around randomly. Oh. Off he goes. Um, I'll fix that animation. It's easy enough to fix. I'll just change the max height of the maximum speed here to 200. And it'll forever run at that speed. Uh, okay, and... Where's he gone? There he is. Okay. So if I want to deal damage to him and react to that damage, uh, I need first of all to be able to send damage across to him. So on my third person character, I'm just going to send basically a very simple attack towards him. Um, so when I push left click on my left mouse button, I'm going to shoot a sphere trace. By channel. Start location is get... Actor location. Put it there. And the end location is we're gonna get camera uh camera manager get location the camera get forward oh no get forward vector of the camera, uh, multiply the forward vector by how distance we want to fly it. So we do 1000 there and add these values together. Radius of 16. Draw a debug for duration, hit compile, and now when I click here, 
he shoots a line out towards the center of the screen. So um, now I need to make it so it hits him. Now, when you first make a line trace or sphere trace, you want to change the visibility channel to camera because pawns by default ignore the visibility channel. So now, um, when I hit him, it hits him. Okay. So once you do that, you want to register a damage event. So to do that, you take the hit, split that, take the hit actor, apply damage. And we'll apply point damage. Now, ah, what well, I should have done. Hang on. Let's recombine this. Put this out and break it. So I break it because I want the actor. But I also want it as a full thing as well because I want to use the hit info from there. And put that in there. Uh, hit from direction. Um, I mean, we can leave that as is. It'll be fine. Hit info. Uh, no, hit from direction. We can do that. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Uh, trace start direction. Um, trace end, trace start. Put that in there. Done. Or just impact normal actually. That'd be fine as well. Um. Okay, that does that. Damage causer would be uh, self, which would be the player character, and that applied to point damage. Now hit compile and save. Now apply point damage. We'll tr oh, let's put number in there. One, that'd be fine. Uh, point apply point damage will trigger an effect on our pawn for our enemy. It will trigger this node called this, uh, any damage or like point damage we want. Sorry, because that's point damage. Event point damage, and you get the information across from here. So I could do a print string for example. And to print out um, the damage that was dealt. So when I push play, and if I click on him, it shouts out which number it hit. Okay. Now what I want to check is when I am in perception mode, I want to be able to see he would need to be able to detect when he's been hit. So it doesn't know he's been hit unless I customly make it. But with enemy AI controller, you can do that here. So we go add component perception which you probably have if you're doing sight and things like that but with perception here you add the damage senses config and you want to open it up and just make sure everything's okay here damage yep yeah, yep yeah, okay compile done so now it should oh no we might have to do a report hang on i can't remember now it's been a while uh da, 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 da. Yeah, do a report. Um, so AI controller here, you then do report damage event. Damage actor is self. The instigator is damage causer. Damage amount is damage amount. And event location is the hit location there. Hit compile and save. So he is now going to register where he got hit in the world. So if I shoot him, oh, I've got to put on debug. So you see that red sphere? So he's registered that as a damage he's been hit from. Now, if you want him to know where the damage has come from, like if you want to know that he, he recognized that's where the player hit him, um, we can make him uh, register that instead. So rather than event location plugged into hit location, I want to do shot direction and just multiply that by a, a float, whatever it is. Um, or I can put in here from the hit info, break this, and take the hit trace start, which is at the player's location. So when I push play, and if I hit him now, uh, and so if I hit him now, the red sphere will appear on my point rather than his point. See? So he knows that I was on a shot him. Okay. So that's how we do damage events. Uh, I'll give it this pinch string now. So when you are applying damage to something, 
you need to, when you're calling the point damage event or any damage event you want to record the damage event here with a report damage event plug in the available nodes here um so there's more stuff here too um but plug in the available nodes you have here and that should then should work as long as you've got the ai perception set up with a damage sense on here we can make him do that um so if i want him to run towards that point instead uh of just registering it on ai perception i'm just going to go add event on target perception updated and from here i can uh break that and from that um the actor would be who hit him so we'll say if that's a player character so it's equal to get player character plug that in plug that in uh so if that's the case then we will do a blackboard key so um blackboard and set a uh, value as object and the key here is going to be make literal name and we'll call this one target actor then we have the object value now the object value here we're going to use successfully sensed so successfully sensed you can come out and do a select node and the select node you want is the one that's yellow it gives you this like wildcard options so i plug in object name here to return value and i've got true or false options so if i successfully sense them is true i want to plug in the player character into that true node if it's false leave it blank so when you when you uh when it disappears and and uh isn't registered anymore it will be nulled okay so next i need to go to my blackboard add the object here that'd be target actor and change the key type here to a character save then go to our behavior tree and we want to make him uh do a sequence another one this will be like chasing more sequence here and we'll tell him to do move to and move to will be target actor and that's what we have to do for that one because if it's a set to it if the blackboard key in move to is set to an actor rather than a location it will update that location in, in real time so then all i have to do on here on this sequence add a decorator blackboard choose target actor and change that to is not set so if we haven't got an actor to chase he'll just look around randomly uh if he does we want it to abort this so click on it and change it to abort both and it'll abort that and tell it to go down here instead save and there you go so now he should run around randomly until i hit him and then he'll chase me and to turn this on as well so you can see it there you go and now he chases me because i hit him yeah now this damage event will last forever it won't disappear uh, you can set an age limit on it so they will eventually disappear and give up and not register it anymore so if i change the age on it um uh, be on the controller so on the controller here max age will do three seconds Hit compile test that out play game and Turn it on. So I hit him. One, two, three. And he forgets where I am and just goes back to doing his randomly thing. So that damage event has triggered that target perception updated again. But because there's nothing been detecting, then it will think there's no one to chase. So I hit him again. Whoosh. Tag, you're it, and away he comes. And off he goes. Okay. So I know I went for that really, really quickly. Um, but uh, this video you can watch uh, from next week on uh, on YouTube or on Patreon straight away uh, afterwards. Patrons get archived of the stream straight away, whereas everyone else has to wait a little bit. Um, uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. Other questions? Uh, how much time we got left? About 15 minutes, okay. 
Uh, how can you make AI fight each other? From Robert Hansen. Um, uh, so, uh, we don't have time to set it up, but you have to set up fake teams unless you're happy to go into C++ stuff. Um, so, for example, enemy AI here, we can have a tag on it. And add a tag to it saying red team and the other one saying blue team or whatever. Um, and then what you do is you, uh, you want him to find targets and attack targets. But you have to get filter that out. It's hard to explain. Without, it's a long, it's a it's a longer process. We can't do it in fifteen minutes. Uh, but I can show you an example that I made during a live uh, a one to one session with someone. Um, if I can find it, um, uh, I can't remember what I called it. Oh, there you go. Team AI. I'll open this up so I can show you what it looks like. Uh, this will be a series at some point when I get around to it. Uh, it's quite cool. We've also done formations in it as well. Um, but yeah. Um, uh, uh, M-Zone. Hi, Ryan. How's it going? Very well, thank you. Any chance to continue the climbing series as in side-to-side -side movement, jumping from ledge to ledge? Uh, yeah, in time. In time. Um, there's a billion other things on the to do to do list that everyone wants, so it's just a matter of getting to them eventually. Um, so yeah, in time. Um. Yeah, uh, yeah. So this is uh, the team based stuff. Can't remember how far we got this. So this is them getting into formations. Uh, randomized formations as well. So they'll avoid each other and try and position each other into good formations. And one of them is a leader. Um, so they're working out what they're trying to do. <laughs> so leader just moves around. And then every now and then we'll try and get into a formation, I think. That's what we tried doing. No, I think they're just moving around the character. I think we changed it. Um, but essentially... The NPC characters have um, tags, um, but not in that one. Uh, be on maybe this one. No, oh, I would have put it. I can't really put it now. Oh, I think we don't dynamically. Um, Or did we change the team? And then NPC character in the construct. Oh, character base. I've done it on. That's why. So on character base, uh, I did on construct. If it's on team, set material based on the team you're on. And I use this variable here to determine what team they're on, not tags. Um, I can't remember what we did now. So this was just in a one-to-one -one session. Um, and then when we wanted them to attack each other. So task attack. Um, they would attack. Um, no, uh, find nearest target. There we go. Find nearest target. They would get the enemy team ar array, which I've got a, a team set up by the game mode, which is holding who's on their same team. So if you're doing a fight scene, it'll be a fight coordinator actor. Uh, keeping track of the teams that are on and you can make them fight towards the nearest character, nearest actor. I'd say it's, a, it's a long job. I can't do it all in 10 minutes, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, so this this all worked. Um, I can't remember how I... What we, I can't, it's, it's a few weeks ago now. Um, we said to them to do... Um... Yeah, so this was just getting formation one. So NPC BT. So if I set 
uh, the AI here to run this behavior tree instead. These guys will now get into formation and turn to attack each other. I think. Maybe I missed something out. I can't remember now what I did. Uh, is it, uh, I can't. I don't want to change too much of it. But yeah, you, it will be something coming out in the future. Um, it's a matter of time uh, to get it together. That's all. Um, Uh, would you ever consider doing a level design tutorial, something like using assets from the medieval dungeon to assets? Yes, and it is coming. Um, so I want to I want to showcase more stuff with like level design and like also just design I a theory behind it as well, because a lot of people make bad levels because they don't understand level design. Um, especially when it comes to open world maps, I see a lot of bad open world maps. Um, so we'll be going through some of that stuff in practice with Unreal. So not just the technical side of things, but also the theoretical side of it about what makes a good map good um, and also run well. So we're doing that as well at some point. Um, a good resource if you want to learn like game design, level design theory is if you follow Tommy Norberg on Twitter. He's got a book coming out as well, but um, he does great illustrations and um, good level design tips on Twitter. So definitely check him out. Tommy Norberg. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Uh, Adam B, is there a way to detect if a character overlaps a water body without adding logic to the water body itself? Uh, yes, so in games, we typically make sure the water body is set at zero, zero in the height. Okay, so it's set at zero, uh, sea level. Then all you do is if the player's z-axis goes under zero, goes into a negative, then you're underwater. That's it. And lots of games do it that way. Um, there'll be more Niagara videos coming out, Michael. I've got a couple up. Um, check them out. Um, I want to do more Niagara stuff as well. Um, get back into game arts videos and things like that. Um, there's tons of stuff I need to get on with with my video tutorials and stuff off like stuff like that. Um, it's literally just finding the time. Um, working from eight in the morning till five in the evening, and then working from on the channel from nine and again till two in the morning and sometime in between that having dinner playing with the kids yeah going to sleep whenever that happens um what about hansen have you used the new water plugins can you make water like a river have a current that moves a player yeah you can um we don't have time to set it up now but yes you, there is a way of doing it uh, again, that's on the docket as well to uh, do videos about the new water system and how to do rivers and things like that and river flow. Um, but you can, it works from a spline and you can get the direction of a spline. And that's, you can use it, that to determine the flow. Okay, any last questions before we wrap up? Uh, as it is closer time. Um, I see ND asks, do you have any tips on what to do if the landscape texture doesn't come out right when deploying to mobile? Um, please double check the requirements for mobile development uh, compared to PC development. There are restrictions, especially when it comes to materials for mobile. For example, Mobiles can't handle 4K textures, maximum 2K textures only. And there are other stipulations too. So please check out the mobile prob uh, mobile restrictions on UE4 documentation. So definitely check that out. But most of their restrictions are, ma are material based. Uh, what game am I making? I'm making a 3D platformer. Uh, like, if you mean my own private game, that's what I'm doing.
Okay. Any last questions? Anything I missed? I Raptor. Uh, what's my favorite triple a game i have quite a few favorite games um probably world of warcraft is up there for me i love world of warcraft um but i, I don't know my my game library is so wide I can tell you what I'm playing at the moment. At the moment, I'm playing the uh, Final Fantasy XII Zodiac Age on Xbox. Um, I play that like for half an hour before I go to bed every night. Um, but other than that, I play World of Warcraft when I can. I haven't had much time lately. I literally, I'm doing like basically two private sessions each day, every day for the next six weeks. So um, it's mm, when I get a chance to play it. <laughs> As I said, hopefully, I mean, hopefully I, the support keeps growing as it has been and uh, one, the one-to-one -one sessions keep going as they are and the success keeps growing that way too. Hopefully, we'll get to a point where I can do this full-time. And if I have more full-time doing this, then I can more full-time making content. If I'm making this much content now, imagine what I'm doing when I've got a full 40 hours a week doing it. Gonna, You'll see a lot of stuff coming out. Uh, including the return of my weekly podcast that I wanted to do, want to do where I interview game developers, talk about game design uh, things and things like that. Plus some extra cool stuff that I can't reveal yet, uh, but it only works. What's your favourite Final Fantasy character from any of the games? Um... I think Auron from Final Fantasy X. Dude's got swagger. And the kicking sword. What do I do for caffeine? I don't really drink coffee, so the only caffeine I'll get is from Coca-Cola. Um, and now and then the Mountain Dew. Um, yeah, that's it. Just, Just the caffeine of life. Okay, so I think we're going to end it there. Time is midnight now for me. So we're going to end it there. Uh, thank you to everyone's questions. As I said before, the live stream archive of this will be available to Patreon members straight away. Everyone else will get the following week. So uh, check that out next week or tomorrow uh, based on who, how you're supporting me. Other than that, what's ne coming next? So we've got more content as usual every day uh, on Saturday. There's another live stream, uh, which will be game night, where I'll play game uh, online, chill out, have some fun with you guys, uh, maybe invite you guys in for a gaming session. We'll see. I don't know what game we're going to play yet. Last time we played Among Us, um, but if you want to play a game with me, let me know in Discord. Join my Discord. Details are in my About page on my channel. Check it out. Um, but that's it. I think we'll call it there. I'm going to go get some rest. And I'll see you guys in a few days' time. Other than that, check out the contents coming out all over the place. Reminder, the Jigsaw Puzzle series is available in its entirety on Patreon right now for gold members. And on Patreon, they'll get it weekly. YouTube will get it weekly after that. So, loads of content coming out for them. They've got key bindings as well coming out this week. Uh, new voting coming out. Tons of stuff. Anywho, I'm off to get some sleep. Have a great night, everyone. And I'll see you all next time. Bye, everyone.